Hi, this is Gilles, the radio prepper. Remember the uh, uh, Ilert Tenna and the uh, MEF1 unfed tuners that I built uh, and uh, posted video about? Uh, well, the uh, designer EA3GCY, uh, Javier, I think that's how you pronounce his name, uh, he also makes uh, transceiver kits and uh, uh, he's actually signing me one which is a uh, DSB transceiver. DSB means uh, dual sideband. And I'll tell you why uh, it's important uh, for uh, prepping, in my opinion. Uh, I did get a uh, BTX40, by the way, which uh, I haven't uh, played uh, with yet, but uh, the um, MFT40 DSB transceiver is a little more interesting to me because of the dual sideband. Uh, usually we use one sideband, uh, the upper sideband USB, or we use the lower sideband LSB. And on the 40 meter band, for instance, uh, the uh, commonly accepted uh, mode is LSB, lower sideband. Now, there is a bit of a problem with that because uh, most military radios like the RT320, which I love using, only has uh, the USB mode, upper sideband. So most people are on LSB, lower sideband, uh, on 40 meters, and as well as on 80 meters. Now a dual sideband transceiver will transmit and receive on both sidebands. So you can be heard by someone who's using uh, LSB, uh, like most people do on 40 meters. You can also be heard by people using USB with, say, a military radio. And that's awesome because uh, it really opens up. Uh, I mean, you're using both modes at the same time, basically. So uh, it's really, uh, it's not as efficient, of course, as using only one sideband, but mm, it's HF, so on HF power is not so much uh, concern as on, say, you know, VHF or UHF. So uh, I will uh, get the kit, to put uh, put it together for you, and uh, we'll test it and see how it works. And I think it's going to be uh, pretty interesting. I have to say the circuit board is very nice, clearly divided between the receiver and the transmitter. The manual is uh, very detailed and clearly uh, written for beginners. Current draw on receive is 25 milliamps. <laughs> Big thumbs up on that one. Excellent. Power output is uh, 3 watts at 12 volts, up to 4. Uh, so that's not much, but uh, with a good antenna, it should work. First time I see a quadrant component layout map, now that's going to be very useful to uh, locate uh, components mentioned in the manual. Components are in uh, individual plastic bags, clearly labeled. Yeah, I'm starting to like this kit. It's really, uh, it's really well done with uh, a good attention to detail. I love that soldering station. <laughs> It's awesome. Highly recommended. I'm not getting paid to say this. The printing on the board could be a little better. It's a little washed out, but uh, it's readable. Now all the uh, resistors are installed. Uh, everything went well. So far, so good. By the way, R29 was in a different bag, so uh, keep that in mind. And now I'll start with the uh, capacitors. I installed all the uh, 100 nanofarad capacitors, but I forgot my uh, magnifying lens, <laughs> so I can't read the things. Well, that's going to be a challenge. All the uh, capacitors are in. Now I'm going to start with the uh, semiconductors. I'm not going to use these uh, IC mounts thingies. I think they uh, they just create a, another point of failure, so I, I'd rather solder them directly on the board. 
for the uh, integrated circuits, I'm going to use the uh, little pieces of foam they came on to hold them against the board. And I flip it over. And hopefully they won't fall. Yep. And then I can just go ahead and solder. So I'm going to use solder one pin here on the end. Then the opposite one. And then I can finish my soldering job. Let's do that real quick. You try not to stay too long on the pins, not to overheat the uh, integrated circuits. Coming right along. By the way, uh, this relay, it's probably not a good idea to uh, clip the leads on the bottom because that induces stress uh, into the uh, mechanical parts of the relay. So uh, I'd just rather leave them as is. Don't forget that this uh, D2 diode has to be mounted about 10 to 12 millimeter off the board. Before uh, soldering the uh, power transistor, I have to make sure that it's not connected to the heatsink. And apparently it isn't, so I can go ahead. And now we go on to what I think is probably the easiest part of the kit, is winding the turrets. And there are a few of them. And they're very easy to do. Uh, this, by the way, is already one turn. I just have to put in another turn. Of course, I'm trying to do this watching the screen instead of my fingers. <laughs> Whoa, there we go. Two. Three. And I continue like this up to 16 turns. If you can count, you can wind the toroid. And that's it. Doesn't get much easier than that. To scrape the wires, I just use my uh, cutters, like so. You have to be careful not to uh, break them, of course. But this one is easy because the wire is pretty thick. I turn them all around and I make sure that all the uh, enamel paint is gone. And that's it, really. There are only uh, one transformer actually two, one here, 10 turns on one side and three turns on the other side. And this one is a toroidal transformer. It's pretty easy to make, but um, one thing I'd like to ask uh, Javier <laughs> is to give us more wire because I didn't waste any, just this little part here, and I barely, barely have enough wire to, uh, to complete the, uh, the windings. So just a little more, you know, 10 centimeters, that would be great. Thanks. For uh, toroidal transformers, make sure you always identify the windings with an ohm meter. So this one is A. Yep. And this one is B. And is there, are there any shorts? No. Nope. Good to go. It is finished. I'm really impressed with the uh, quality of the kit. Uh, it's really, really good. Uh, the uh, circuit board uh, is really nice. The solder really flows on those pads and uh, it's really good quality. Nothing was missing. 
and it's a pretty easy kit to put together. Um, maybe not a first kit, but if you built a kit before, this would be a good second kit actually. And if you haven't, just buy like a Pixie off eBay for $4 and make that before. But again, the uh, big advantage of this is that it has dual sidebands, USB and LSB. I actually bought a uh, Bit X40 to use as a uh, survival radio and uh, put into a uh, watertight case. But I think I might just use this one instead because of the, the dual sidebands. So, um, of course, now I have to test it. <laughs> it might not work, but I'd be surprised if it didn't. Uh, the only thing, like I said, is uh, there should be a little bit more magnet wire in the kit and I'm sure that's going to be fixed. And you thought I was going to let you hang in there until next week to know if it's working. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I want to know too. So here's the uh, MFT-40. I have a Thales military microphone with uh, the corresponding audio connectors here. Uh, this costs more than the kit, by the way. <laughs> uh, so let's get going. And uh, oh, here is an antenna connector. Wire the thing and uh, plug it in. Well, this is pretty stressful. <laughs> I haven't plugged it in yet, so I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, one issue um, is that I have to tune those adjustable inductors here and uh, the manual says you need a special tool for that and indeed you do uh, but it's not included in the box uh, anyone who's built an aircraft uh, kit knows that uh, they do put that tool uh, in the box it's like a small uh, plastic uh, screwdriver I don't have one so I don't know what I'm going to do uh, I wish it was included it's probably just worth a few cents um, well, that might be uh, fixed later, uh, who knows, but we can test the uh, receiver and see if at least we hear something. Moment of truth. Oh, I hear something. Oh, yeah. It's not tuned, of course, so it might not quite work, but... Uh, it's definitely receiving something. I hope I can hear some voices. Well, the speaker microphone works. Let's change the uh, tuning range by removing this little jumper. Oh! The tuning is very sensitive, uh, it would be better to use a 10 ton potentiometer, but maybe later. Well, it's definitely working. Uh, I'm not sure about the... Uh, transmission side of it, uh, well, maybe we can test it a little quick. I plugged in my ZM2 tuner, so it's placed on tune, there's a bridge, 50 ohm bridge, so I won't be damaging the, uh, the final transistor, which is here. I'm going to press the PTT button, and uh, if any power is coming out, we'll see the LED here turn red. <laughs> it's working. It's working. That's awesome. I'll just make some noise in the microphone and see if uh, that changes the uh, brightness of the LED. One, two, one, two, one, two. Not really. Let's see the tuner. Okay, antenna is tuned. Call ACQ, call ACQ 
Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. <laughs> I, I can't possibly hope that someone will answer. The thing is not even tuned. Okay, so... Uh, Let's turn it off. I wish uh, this transceiver had a CW mode, a real CW mode for Morse code. Uh, but it doesn't. Uh, so for me, that's a bit of a letdown, but I'm really happy about this kit. I mean, it's, it's really awesome. Um, if you don't do Morse code, um, well, or if like me, you have other radios, actually a bunch of them, that do Morse code on 40 meter, uh, you're all set. And I really, really like the uh, double sideband uh, feature. Because again, you can talk to uh, uh, radios that have USB only, like a military radio, like my uh, RT320. So that will conclude our video, at least part one. Of course, uh, there will be a part two where I put this uh, awesome transceiver in a case and uh, what we're all waiting for, the field test. Have a good one.